In this video we're going to do an introduction to complex numbers. So what is a complex number? Well let's begin with something that we're kind of familiar with. All right, what is the square root of 25? Well of course it's 5 and what do we mean when we say it's 5? The reason that it's 5 is because if we square 5 we get 25. Okay now the square root of 64 is 8 and the reason it's 8 is because if we do 8 squared we get 64. Now the square root of negative 81 though, what would that be? Now notice it wouldn't be 9 because 9 squared gives you 81, but it also wouldn't be minus 9 because minus 9 times minus 9 is also positive 81. So what is this? Is it possible to take the square root of a negative number? Well it turns out uh, you, there's no real number that has the property that if you square it you get negative 81. But we're going to introduce something called a, an imaginary number. Okay, This number i, we define i, uh, i, we use the letter i for imaginary, we define i to be the square root of negative 81. Okay, now now that we have this definition, what is the square root of negative 81? Well, let's remember that square roots have this property that the square root of a times b is the same thing as the square root of a times the square root of b. Okay, so um, for example, the square root of 21 would be the same thing as the square root of, well, 21 is 3 times 7, so we could write this as the square root of 3 times the square root of 7. Okay, now this uh, property of square roots works as long as at least one of the a or b is, is positive. So how would we do the square root of negative 81? Well, we can think of negative 81 as the same thing as 81 times negative 1. Okay, 81 times negative 1 is negative 81. So according to this uh, rule here, we could write this as the square root of 81 times the square root of negative 1. But the square root of 81 is 9 and the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so the square root of negative 81 is actually 9i. If you were to do 9i times 9i, you would get 81i squared, but i squared is negative 1. So it's kind of strange that if you square i, you get negative 1. Okay, now what would be the square root of negative 100? It turns out it would be 10i. Okay, now what about the square root of negative 23? Well, 23 is not a perfect square, so we just have to write it like this. It's the same thing as the square root of 23 times i. Okay, now the i is not underneath that square root symbol. It's just the square root of 23 times i. Okay, now what is a complex number? Well, a complex number is just a number that can be written in the form a plus bi. Okay, so any number that can be written in the form a plus bi is a complex number. So let's look at some examples. Which of the following are complex numbers? 5 plus 3i, is that a Yes, it's of the form a plus bi. By the way, the a is called the real part and the b is called the imaginary part. So the real part of this number is 5 and the imaginary part is 3. Okay, but this is of the form a plus bi, so it's a complex number. Now here we have 2 minus 7i, but notice that 2 minus 7i could be thought of as 2 plus a minus 7 times i. So here the real part is 2, the imaginary part is negative 7, but notice it is a complex number. Okay, what about negative 1 plus 3 fourths i? Yeah, that's, that's a, a complex number. There's nothing wrong with having a fraction here, 3 fourths. Uh, what about 8i? Well, 8i is the same thing as 0 plus 8i. So this is a complex number where the real part is 0 and the imaginary part is 8. Okay, but it is a complex number. Okay, it's called a pure imaginary number if the real part is 0, but it, but it is a complex number. Now what about 13? Okay, well, it turns out 13, we can think of 13 as being 13 plus 0i. So any real number, like 13, actually is also a complex number. Right, so the set of real numbers uh, is a subset of the set of complex numbers. 13 can be thought of as 13 plus 0i. And what about pi plus the square root of 2 times i? Yeah, again, that's a complex number because it's of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Pi and the square root of 2 are perfectly good real numbers. So all those actually were complex numbers. In fact, it's kind of hard to think of something that wouldn't be a complex number. Uh, I mean, I guess a, a car you know, or, a, or a pencil is not a complex number, but, but uh, these things all are complex numbers. Okay, now one thing that's kind of interesting about complex numbers is you can think of a complex number as an ordered pair. So, for example, this complex number 5 plus 3i, we could kind of think of it as being associated with the ordered pair 5 comma 3, and we could actually plot this ordered pair here. We could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 comma 3, that's this point. 
Okay, and we could associate that with the point 5 plus 3i. And so each point in uh, in the plane here is an ordered pair, and that ordered pair can be, can be thought of as a complex number. Now what about the number 4? Well, the number 4 would be 4 comma 0, right, because it's 4 plus 0i. Okay, so along the x-axis here, it's also called the real axis. Okay, along the x-axis, we have the real numbers. Okay, like 4. Uh, now what about uh, a pure imaginary number like 8i? Well, 8i is the same thing. 8i, remember, is the same thing as 0 plus 8i. So we would associate with that the ordered pair 0, 8. So we go to 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 0, 8 is this point here, and that's associated with a point 8i. So every point along the y-axis here, also called the imaginary axis, is a pure imaginary number like 8i. Okay, or negative 3i would be down here, okay, because that's negative 3, 0. Okay, but other points, so this point here would be negative uh, 4 plus 1i, right, or just negative 4 plus i is another way of saying that. Okay, so each point uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system is an ordered pair, and we can think of that ordered pair as a complex number, and vice versa.